Yeah, hey everyone, Brian with you from the Game Com. We are doing our AI only championship series. We are doing the fall 2020, and today it begins. Right now it begins. We had our first episode zero come out, mm, I don't know, a little bit before this one. And essentially that one we kind of talked about the rules and kind of all the different group breakdowns and all that kind of stuff. We'll probably talk a little bit more about each individual group as the, you know, groups actually play out. It kind of depends on how much there is to talk about. But uh, essentially we are starting today right Right now with group one we will be loading in i will put a pause in here but i just kind of wanted to show everything that was going down we got gandhi we got harold we got bull moose teddy which let's see what is his thing so breathtaking tiles adjacent to natural wonders mountains get plus two science so chances are he's going to spawn near a uh, natural wonder i would think we'll see then we got pericles yadwig uh yadviga uh Sodeman, pachacuti and tamar now pachacuti means there's probably going to be a lot of mountains which is going to be interesting all the map types we're going to be doing at least for now is going to be shuffle we might shift that eventually. I know that might screw Harold if it's not a, you know, if it's like a Panjam map or something like that. But, I mean, he's just going to have to kind of work with it. Uh, we're doing standard map size, which might mean we're a little condensed. I don't know. We'll kind of have to see how that ends up working out. And then I think everything else we're just going to... Uh, we definitely want to leave all the natural wonders. Is there anything team or start position? Oh, interesting. Uh, we'll do balance start, but I don't know if that's going to make a difference. But... If you missed the last episode, we are going to be playing with all the different game modes on, which should be interesting. Now, we do want to do a custom timer here. We do want to go 315 turns. We will leave all the different victory conditions on. At times, we've experimented with, like, turning off the victory types, except, like, domination. And then the AI tends to get a little more aggressive. But we're going to leave everything on. And, hey, if someone can win a 200, like, Pericles, if they can win a 215 culture victory, sweet, good for them. Now, what happens at that point, for example, and I didn't talk about this in episode one uh, or in episode zero. But if, like, let's say Pericles wins before the timer runs out, what would end up happening is then Pericles would be one of the two that advances to the knockout rounds. And then whoever's in first place, if it's not Pericles... If it is Pericles and whoever's in second place in score at that point, as soon as the game ends, would then also advance. So let's say Gandhi had a really strong start, but he was getting his butt kicked. It didn't really matter. Pericles goes out before he ends up losing his position. Just, you know, throwing that out there. Uh, once again, uh, all those are turned on, which the this is going to be really, really interesting because we've never done an AI only series with the dramatic ages mode. I think this is going to offer some really, really interesting uh, flavor here as we go along. And honestly, some of these maps, I, it's going to be dependent. I think sometimes it's going to uh, 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 it's not going to really make that much of a difference. But there's going to be certain games where I 100 percent think that it's going to be uh, whoever is going to end up advancing going to be the sieve that essentially survives the dramatic ages so i don't know this might be too freaking rng but we're gonna roll with it and see what happens so we're gonna go ahead and load into the game and we'll be back right in just a second now, while it finishes loading in, I am going to mention that generally these episodes tend to be between like 20 and 25 minutes. They tend to be a little bit shorter than most of our normal episodes on the channel. A couple reasons for that. Number one, I tend to talk really fast, especially in this particular uh, 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 series, just because there's a lot going on. So I'm trying to like talk it all out really, really quick and draw attention to everything. And so because of that, it's like I almost have to like keep the episode shorter. Also, it kind of helps me with my sanity here because... You know, these episodes tend to be like, ah, so, you know, the, the, the just keep in mind this first episode might be a little bit longer because we have to get to like the first pause. It really honestly is going to come down to whenever the pauses is uh, pauses is pauses is pauses are so. Uh, first things first, this is a very interesting map. We look like we're almost on like small islands, which is going to be very beneficial to Norway. It's going to be very negative, though, when it comes to early game aggression, which is going to be interesting. Now, the one thing about these heroes is it seemed like... We're discovering them pretty early on, but I don't know when I was doing my test game There was like only one hero discovered and it was like turn 200 or something I was like this is really weird. So we'll have to keep an eye on that I don't know for whatever reason the AI seems kind of bad at that So anyways northwest corner we have Pachacuti with very few mountains actually all things considered Ah, oh, very few mountains 
Um, I'm trying to remember. Also, you're gonna hear a lot of barbarian pops. I don't know. I have the music and stuff really low because these keep getting claimed by freaking people. My Civ Six episode, so I've been having the sound really low. But um, you can also see the frame rate is, you know, it's not horrific, but it's kind of bad, especially when things are jumping around. But anyways, you're gonna hear a lot of barbarian encampments early game. Those should go away though once they all finish spawning. But anyways, Pachacuti, Northwestern Island, all to himself. Then we got Poland, who is actually sharing an island with Ottomans here. And it's not a particularly large island. And there's also two. Oh, that's one of the new city states. Uh, Ashan. Plus two science from each great work. Oh, they basically switch Babylon to Ashan. Okay, still. And then Johannesburg is also one of the newer ones as well, too. Uh, plus one production for every improved resource type. Uh, but anyways, this is going to be really the one source of early aggression. We'll have to see. It actually looks like Poland might be going on the aggression. Uh, can we see army really quick? Army, army, army. There we go. It wasn't working. Uh, so Yadviga has 125. Solomon has 165. So she's somewhat unlikely to declare war because she's got a bit of a deficit right now when it comes to that. Usually they won't declare war unless they have an advantage. Now Norway's down here sharing right next to uh, India. Norway is about to declare war. They could potentially take Calcutta. These other two are going to be basically impossible right now. Um, early game walls are basically going to be nasty to take. We'll actually pop in and look. We really want to pause the freaking game so I can look at things, but uh, walls must be very easy to get. The techs are really shaped up that way. And then Pericles is over here on the same island, and then above them is actually Georgia. Georgia actually has a lot of room over here, so Georgia is looking like she's in maybe one of the better spots. And then down here, oh no, that's Norway. You're not Norway, you're Teddy! You're Teddy! Oh no! Yeah, and what's interesting is, did Teddy end up declaring war here? Teddy denounced, but they did not declare war yet. But with all these walls, it's going to be a really hard time for him to actually conquer. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is Gandhi, as soon as he pops out those elephants, if there is a war declaration, it's going to be GG. So everyone is getting walls very very soon so yeah Norway's actually down here and this might actually work out well for Norway I mean this is a very good map for them but like you can see right here Greece you know they're gonna be a little open specifically Athens to uh some some uh long ships if they so choose so uh just looking at the base groups right now if I had to pick two to make it through I would actually probably pick Georgia because I mean Georgia's in a ridiculous spot and then I would actually say Norway if Norway could come succeed coming all the way over there but we'll have to see Honestly, Pericles is in a fairly good spot, too. It really is going to depend on whether or not Teddy looks towards India or if Teddy looks towards uh, Gandhi or uh, uh, Pericles. So once again, let's pop into Teddy really fast. So if we click on any of the different sieves, we can actually see what they see. Uh, in addition to that, we can see whether or not they're at war. So they are still going super aggressive in units. So Bullmoose Teddy is still going to definitely go super heavy. Teddy is looking at a dark age right now, though interesting and actually i wonder can we go here and we want to look at score real quick and so everyone needs to have at least 20 so right now uh soliman's looking at a dark age harold's got a golden age uh gandhi's got a golden age pericles golden age golden age golden age teddy got a golden age and yadviga got a golden age why is this showing up oh because this is me that's why okay so there's only one civ looking at a dark age right now so anyways, tech tree, walls were super, super early here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a very interesting tech tree. It actually looks fairly normal, <laughs> which is a bit unusual. So Teddy did declare war on Pericles. Uh, everyone except Soliman got a golden age. That's kind of unfortunate for Tempo. That's really going to come back and bite. Yeah, and with Erdine flipping over here to uh, Poland. Dude, Poland's actually in a very good spot. What's their military look like right now? 195 to 215. So, um, you know, uh, uh, Ottomans still have a lot of uh, combat strength, but yeah, they're a bit behind the eight ball here right now. Now, what is looking? What is this looking like? Pericles actually has got a stronger army, so I think Pericles declared the war. There's so many of these things popping up here that it's kind of hard for me to talk and pay attention to them. So just FYI, we're probably going to miss some of this stuff. But I really think that Pericles ended up declaring war, which honestly is probably best for Teddy because Teddy really needs to go that way. What the freaking heck? He's got a Nasi. A Nasi? 
Ignores movement penalties. Use when located on a resource. Okay. They don't really have that much strength right now. No one else has discovered any other heroes, but that one might actually really come in handy right now because it's got some range strength and he's going to be able to do some crazy good damage. The other thing to keep in mind on this is he's got 40 range strength. So I, we're almost about 99% sure his walls are actually going to be doing a Nasi type damage there. So they should be doing 40 damage on all, all these guys. So now that Teddy's got walls in Cincinnati, he's going to be perfectly fine. He might be able to go on the advantage, but I'm going to be honest with walls being so early on and so easily grabbed. I don't know anyone's going to be particularly good at early game aggression. Generally, early game walls essentially stop the AI from early game aggression. And that, unfortunately, is what's happening. Now, Erdine is, even if it flips over here to Poland, it's probably going to end up getting conquering, conquered back. Did Poland declare war on Soleiman yet? No, they're still actually kind of friendly with each other. Interesting. Anyone else at war? Can we, can we click on people? Yes, we can. Just want to take a quick look. Yeah, you're at war with Pericles. Uh, blah. I'm still not done looking at people, please. You are friendly. Yes, yeah, so no one else. There's no, no other wars right now, which just kind of how it shaked out. So let's see. Four cities here for uh, Norway. He's got number five popping down. One, two, three, four cities as well with five coming down. Uh, Georgia is actually losing one of her cities. Two, four. That was her number fifth city. Is she going to be able to hold on to it? Uh, let's see. If we hit this, if she gets a governor there sooner rather than later, potentially. She's building the Great Bath there, which means the Great Bath has not been built yet, which is interesting teddy's got four cities and number five is probably going to go on this island which is going to be pretty okay for him i think he's fine i don't think he's got to worry too much now india here is in a very bad spot yeah gandhi's in a very bad spot because he's got his five cities but where's he going to go from there not too many options this one he might be able to settle especially since he's got a dark age one of these two and he could probably come settle down here as well but not looking particularly good ottoman's got his unique unit already is that not a little early? Eridine did end up going over to Poland, and he didn't declare war, so uh, right now it is hold, held on to him. Poland also ended up suzerain or levying one of the uh, war uh, Ashan's uh, 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 units right now, which is interesting. Hmm, that is very interesting here. Uh, and she also has a hero we just saw. Who else had the heroes? Oh, uh, no, Ottomans had a hero. They had Hippolyta, which is the heals and then really good melee strength. So we'll have to see whether or not he uses it. Pachacuti is just kind of maintaining up here. He's not really doing a whole lot of anything. Okay, let's take a quick look at the score. Let's see where we're at right now. So Poland is in first place. Pericles is actually in second place. Maybe it depends. Ed. This one's actually flipping over to Pericles. Yeah, Pericles might be able to hold on to second place right now. And Teddy doesn't seem to be too interested in conquering him. Which is kind of disappointing. India does have war elephants. Uh, where was India? Oh, 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 oh. India uh, is got the um, old god obelisk. So which secret society is that? That is the Void Slingers. Let's see, Norway. This is going to be really annoying unless I can pause the game. <laughs> uh, well, um... Um, we'll wait and we'll take a quick look at those. They need to add that stuff in over here. That would be really freaking cool to see what kind of stuff they have. Let's look at everyone's stuff here. So let's see. Teddy's at 59 science. Uh, Pachacuti's at 62. No one's really running away in science right now. Culture, pretty much the same. Actually, Teddy's in first place on that. Uh, gold is, yeah, about equal. Faith is about equal. So, yeah, nothing super major on this. Yields, we don't really need to look at. Text, yeah, whatever. Uh, eras. Oh, yeah, I forgot you can actually see this. So, let's see. Solimon is going to get a Golden Age next era. So, that was the one nice thing about getting the Dark Age is he is going to get a Golden Age. And everyone else right now is set up for a Dark Age. Um, this should happen in 12 turns here, too. Uh, Teddy should be fine. Gandhi should probably be okay, but there's going to be a more than a few Dark Ages. This is going to be an interesting one here. Uh, new hero discovered. Cool. Does discovering a hero give you error score? I think it's only when you found them, right? I don't know. Maybe when you discover your first hero. I don't know. I don't know. Any other wars currently happening right now? I think Pericles Teddy broke off. Teddy's got swordsmen. I mean, Teddy could really go after Ephesus if he really wanted. He really could. When is this? Okay, so uh, you ended up flipping. I was going to say, this is going to be interesting whether or not he gets a Dark Age if he wasn't able to grab that. Because that would be like potentially two Dark Cities right next to him. So if he's getting a Dark Age, that one's going to flip. 
George is still looking pretty good, Beowulf. Dude, he's just like the coolest looking one, man. <laughs> he really is. Also, I love Beowulf. Like, he's like one of the cooler heroes in like anything. So, uh, Ottomans are kind of coming back. Ottomans aren't out. They had a really bad start. They're in last place, but I think they got a chance here. Especially, it, it, it depends on if their neighbors are going to get some Dark Ages. We'll have to see. Pericles recruited a hero. Also, who got religions? Oh, let's look here. Poland got Oya, Hippolyta got Solomon, and Nanasi was Norway. Or, Teddy. <laughs> gonna say that every single time. Religions. Poland got Catholicism. Georgia got a religion. Uh, Norway got a religion. India got a religion. Inca got a religion. So, Teddy actually didn't get a religion. Teddy tends to get a, a religion. So, yeah, I think that's part... Yeah, this is interesting. Teddy's in fourth place. He's coming back. Pachacuti's doing okay. I don't think Pericles' lead is gonna maintain. I do think Poland's lead might. It depends on whether or not she's going to get a Dark Age. I think this era is going to be the key one. Depending on how many Dark Ages we get, it's going to be really, really, really major. So we're not going to touch anything. I don't want to look. I'm not going to spoil it. We're going to find out together. Oh, I could actually just look here. Dang it. I'll try not to spoil myself. So it looks like we're going to have a Dark Age here with Norway, Pachacuti, and Tamar. So all of the major sieves are going to be fine. Except for Pachacuti. Unless he can get one point here. I don't think he got that one point. It does not look like it. So Tamar, Pachacuti, and Norway all got Dark Ages. So she should be able to grab her stuff back without much effort. It's actually going to flip back, so not that big of a deal. And there's our first World Congress, so we can finally slow down here and take a quick look. Bergen ended up flipping for Norway. Norway's actually not doing particularly well. I kind of expected this to be a decent start for Norway. He did finally settle over here. It looked like he was struggling with barbarians, but let's see. He was only at one, two, three. He only still had five cities, which is a little weird. Uh, Pericles is at two, four, six, seven. Now, okay, if you don't know how score works in the game... It's a little weird. So uh, it has empire size, which if I recall correctly, it is all of your tiles. It might be every city tile times two. I don't remember. I, was it every single tile or was it every single tile times two? It was something like that. Uh, wonder score, you get 15 per wonder. So every wonder you get is 15. So uh, any sieve that builds a lot of wonders is going to tend to do pretty well here. Because, like, for example, Pericles has already got three wonders. Um, that's 45 score here. And you can see Yadiviga is in second with 45. But then all of a sudden you look and no one else really has that many wonders. And that's one of the main reasons. Religion right now, Pericles has a big zero, fat zero there. Right now, uh, Yadiviga only has 15 only 12 down here but eventually that number can take up to about 100 so you know when you got like a one point difference someone having a religion and someone not that can make a really really huge difference civics you know what i think empire is one per tile and i think we figured out that civics and technologies were double what they currently had right I think that's how that one worked. Let's pop into Teddy really quick. We can figure this out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So he has 21 total techs. His technology is 42. So yeah, it's whatever you have times two. And then error score is basically how much error score you've gotten. And then great people, is it five per great person? I think it's five per great person. I don't think it's 15. Is it 15 per great person? No. One, two, three. Yeah, it's five per great person. Boom, I remembered. So that's essentially how your score works. Uh, is anyone going to be able to win here before turn 315? It's hit or miss. I would say 95% of the time, no. But at least usually by the time 315 rolls around, we have a good idea who's going to basically come out on top. So a lot of times that last episode or so, it's not really particularly too many. Like there's not too many things that are up in the air. So, you know, there is a chance someone's going to pull out a win, but not necessarily. So who is currently winning right now? I want to look at score. Who is currently winning in tech? It's tomorrow, actually. Basically, I just want to look through and see what the tech are looking like here so we had very early masonry essentially masonry was just like right on the main path which is why everyone got walls pretty early on same thing it looks like iron as well swordsman was a little off but you know for the most part that wasn't too terrible niner looks yeah niner is actually a prereq for a lot of the techs here so that's going to be fairly easy to get as well so 
Yeah, this is probably like the easiest I've seen the tech tree. Normally the tech tree has a couple major things that are kind of off in the middle of nowhere. Like even astrology wasn't really that hard to find. Irrigation actually was like one of the ones that got really um, um, uh, 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 knocked back. Wheel also was kind of in a really weird spot as well. Um, question, pop in here. I wanted to see world climate here. So we're still in climate phase one. There is some contribution already. From what? <laughs> that, 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 that seems wrong. Yeah, that seems weird. How are they contributing contributing to the world climate getting screwed when they don't have anything? I just wonder if maybe it's because of the volcanoes exploding or something like that. I have absolutely no idea. That's a little weird. Uh, how's everyone looking up here, though? Everyone's pretty close together on tech. Uh, Teddy's starting to roll away here with culture. Now, being in the leading culture is not the worst thing in the world because you're going to get a lot of great people, and that usually means you got a lot of wonders. So I think that's part of the reason Teddy's doing pretty okay here with score. I mean, he's definitely within range right now. I'd say pretty much everyone still has a fairly decent shot. I think Harold and Solomon, though, might be a little too far away. Harold's going to have to start settling or start conquering one of the two. Um, and then I just wanted to pop in. Nah, 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 that's not how I wanted to do that. Ah, that's not what I wanted to do. We want to click on a leader and actually take a quick look and see if anyone's at war with each other. So Gandhi is fairly friendly with everyone. Norway as well. Uh, you're still at war with Pericles. Actually, no, he peaced out there for a while. So this is a newer war. Uh, Poland's peaced. Suleiman is peaced. And Tamar is peace. Okay. So then World Congress. So here's our goal with the World Congress because unfortunately we... Actually, do we have to vote or can we shift enter? I don't remember if we can shift enter to skip turns on this. Basically, we want to basically put points into something people don't vote for or to something everyone's going to vote for. Basically, we just don't want to have an impact on it. But we're going to wrap this episode up here. So hope you guys enjoyed this first episode. If you did, drop a like, comment. Let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button, join the game, comment, share your support. I definitely think Pericles is the leader right now, but not by a whole lot. I, and the thing is, I think Poland's lead is kind of up in the air as well. Because, I mean, look at this. Look at this. You know, if he goes to war, the only thing that she's got going for herself is she's got a 57 garrison defense strength, which is going to be a little hard for the uh, catapults to do enough damage. But there is a chance that she might lose some stuff. The other thing to keep in mind is where is she going to settle? If she comes and settles up here, I think she's going to be okay. Because, like, here's the thing. The amount, like, the era score, the empire score that everyone has right now is going to keep going up because there's still a lot of territory for people to land on. So what's really going to matter now is like, is uh, Greece going to continue to settle? Is uh, Poland going to keep settling? Like if Inca comes and starts settling all this stuff, that might change the game. But we'll see. We'll see. That's going to be something to look forward in the future episode. For now, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everybody.